Are you worried your family history research might be lost to future generations? Is it currently sitting on your computer or hard drive? Maybe it's in file folders that no one wants. We are Lynn and Danette. We're cousins, we're family historians, we're a writer and an artist. And we've joined forces to create Heirloom, pre-made templates that take all the work out of building your family history book. We help fulfill your family history book dreams. Join us every Tuesday for conversations and questions with Lynn and Danette, helping you build your legacy for future generations. Our pages, your story. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Conversations and Questions with Lynn and Danette. It's great to have you back here again today. Uh, it's snowing and blowing here in Ontario, but I think this is the last day of it. How is it there in Virginia, Danette? It's sunny and beautiful, cold, but very sunny and pretty. Oh, very nice. I can't wait for that weather. Yeah. <laughs> so today, though, is all about looking at the pages within our family history book and how to structure them and coordinate them and make them flow beautifully. Correct? Right, right. Yep. Yep. I made a nice little video to show you how to do that. How to make your pages right. coordinate, how to make your two page spreads coordinate together. Uh, what else did I talk about? Your photos and your, uh, the bleed, to stay within the bleed, show you how mm -hmm. to use the rulers and the guidelines and everything on the pages. Yeah. All those fun little tools in there that can really make it much easier for you. Exactly. To Exactly. to make sure your pages are going to be exactly what you want them to be. Right. Um, I think you also talk about sort of making sure just the overall book flows well together, that the pages land where they're supposed to land. Um, exactly. That they, right. Cause sometimes I know when I was making books, it would be like, well, wait a minute, I wanted that page to go with that page, but it's not. So how do I fix that? So you do show us how to do that today. I answered that question for you. Very good. Okay. Well, Let's not waste any more time. Let's jump on over into Canva and take a look at how to structure our pages to just make them gorgeous. Good morning or afternoon or evening. This is Danette again with another video to hopefully help you with creating your book using the heirloom templates in Canva. However, a lot of my advice will pertain to any book you're making on any platform you're using. So, as you can see, this is my cover. Before you begin, I want you to go up into where it says file in your upper left hand corner. And you turn on your show ruler, show guide, show margins and show bleed. All of those things, just click on them and they'll open up. You can see my rulers up there. My bleed is right here. A guide is right here. And what they'll do is help you keep everything centered and on track. So as I'm creating my book, I will very often go up into preview and look at my book there. And that will give me an idea of what your reader is going to see. You open the book, everything on the, uh, the left-hand side is the back of the cover. And that's, of course, always going to be blank. And then right here on your right hand side, you have the copyright. Very important to put that in your book. Lynn will be doing a video on what's important to include in your book. I'm going to show you how to put the book together to look neat, interesting, and coherent to your reader. So this will be my first page, it will be my forward and a note to my reader. You might have something else on your first or call it something else. But either way, you want the two to gel together color wise, etc. See, even though my backgrounds aren't exactly the same color, it all still coordinates together. Same here. I use the same fonts and the same color palette. And in a minute, I'll show you how to achieve that. But I just want to give you a quick look at some of the things I've done. 
I put the uh, behind the my story, I guess you would call it. I put a transparent picture of the ship that the ancestors came over on. And what I also did right here was highlight my ancestors' names so that the reader can immediately find them because this is a little intimidating to someone who's not a genealogist seeing all those handwritten names. Oops, I see a problem already. My timeline, which is supposed to be two pages wide, is right here and the other half is over here. So I need to rearrange my pages a little bit because that is ridiculous to have them on two different pages like that. Yep, I need to do a little rearranging. That's, these two pages go together nicely. You should have whatever's on the left-hand side and the right-hand side at least have a relationship to each other. And you'll probably have a lot more text pages than I'm showing you right now, and they would go together. On these two, I would probably change up my colors a little bit. They look a little silly together. They're just disjointed. All right, let me pop out of preview. And what I would do if I want to do some page rearranging, but See, I want these two pages to go together. First of all, I need to make the colors the same. So what I've done, I go right up here, and this will allow me to change my background color. But what I did before I started was set up my color palette down here. Now, a lot of times you'll have more than two, but this way I'll know that any time I want a gold page, I can just press that. And now these two pages are the same color. And the way I did that was once I decided on the shade of gold I wanted, I went up here, found it, and then, okay, now that I'm trying to show you, it's not going to do it. See the little number in black? B7A77F. Then I came down here to where it says untitled palette. I, open, I hit edit and I added the color I wanted. I came right down here and typed in those letters and it'll bring up the uh, color that you chose. I did not choose pink. Don't think that would go in my book very well. So I need to click this and that way all my golds and my grays are the same color. If you're going to have more colors in your book that you're going to use often, then also put those into your, um, what was that called? Into your um, untitled brand. Anyway, so now my goal is to make these two pages be right next to each other in the final book. I don't have any more pages I really need to put into my book, theoretically in this pretend book I'm making. So what I would probably do is add a blank page right here and then put a quote there. Or maybe you might have some more extra pictures you can put there. That way, when you come up into preview, you'll see that your problem's not solved. Huh. I think I should have put this over here. Let's see if that solves the problem. There's a lot of trial and error in all of this. Let's see. There, now my timeline is the same. However, I see I need to change the color of some of my fonts. No big deal, that's easily fixed. What I did in my timeline was put a lot of current events for whatever era we're in. For example, this is the first railroad tracks being laid in the US. This is where uh, 1865, where France gave the United States the Statue of Liberty. It makes it interesting to see where your relatives 
fell in different time periods by knowing what was going on. Because I think we're a little more familiar with events of the time than we are with real dates. Here's the polio vaccine. Oh, look over here is a coronavirus infected the world. That will in the future be an important date. And on we go. Need to do a little touch up here and there, but you'll see what I'm talking about as far as colors coordinating on all of the pages. Now you also need to take into consideration everything being nice and even and tidy. If I wanna make sure this block and this block are the same size, what I would do is create this block and then hit duplicate and move it over and put it into place. I know that it's right next to it because let me move it around so you can see. See that little red dot right there? It tells me they're level. Also, see how this turned a darker shade of gray? That tells me how wide this is. Now, I don't really need two of these here. So I'll get rid of one of them and bring this one back up just a little bit. There we go. Here's a photo page. See how, uh, even though they're different shapes, by putting the little border around them, I made them all, I don't wanna use the word match, but go together in a nice, neat and cohesive way. Here's a photo and a text page. You probably bring these down just a little bit, but that's all in the eye of the beholder. Maybe you don't care about stuff like that. I'm a little OCD. So I have to keep playing with everything and rearranging it. And then when I'm finished, I'm still not happy. Anyway, we'll go on. Here's a uh, family tree I put on. I haven't put the photos in it yet. And I will probably label all the pictures right over here and maybe write a little something about which other, whichever family I'm putting right here. I would make sure that my page about the Taylor sisters is right next to the Taylor page about the Taylor brothers. It just makes sense. You don't want to throw all your hard worked for information all willy nilly throughout the book. It wouldn't make any sense to people. And as I said, you're probably going to have a lot more text pages than I currently have in my little sample book. Actually, I don't have very many text pages at all. Um, but what I would do is say this story continued on to another page, I would make it look just like this, minus the picture. Maybe you have more pictures, that's fine. But I would make another page that looked like this so that there's continuity in this story. And then when I had another story, I would make it look just a little bit different, maybe different color, maybe a different font. That way people don't get confused. Here's another um, text page. But more than likely you'll have several text pages in a row when you're telling different stories about different people. Come all the way to the end. And here I have a family tree. I'm going to, what did I do? accidentally picked it up. Now it'll be out of alignment, watch. I'm gonna go up here to preview to, um, wow, messed that one up too. These two pages should be next to each other. So I will come down here. Let's see what happens if I get rid of this blank page right here. See if that uh, helps the situation. Like I said, there's a lot of trial and error. There we go. This is all one big tree, wife, husband, and all their ancestors. Took a lot to make these two pictures come up somewhat even. This one could still come up a little bit. 
But as you can see, like I said, a lot of trial and error, but look how much nicer it looks when everything is coordinated and the same color palette. For example, right here, that's just too busy for me. I would make all these colored pictures black and white. So you would have uh, more continuity in your page. Just go up here to edit photo, filters, and the very bottom one is the black and white. And you'd have to go through and do each picture individually, but you see where I'm going with that. It will um, be much more eye, eye appealing if it's all in black and white or all in color. But obviously some of these pictures are just never gonna be in color because they're so old. And here's my cover and I will make the, um, you see how I set the tone with the cover. I have the blay, excuse me, the gray and the gold. And then I carry that color palette throughout the book. And then my back cover, I will probably make this gold color nice and plain. And then very small, I would write the title of, of your book. And under that, very small, your name. Because you did a lot of work and you want to make sure everybody knows who did it. I hope that helped you a little bit with uh, putting your book together in a neat, concise, cohesive way. Until next week, have a good one. Okay, that was fantastic. Thank you, Danette, for that. So much great tips and tools in Canva to make all that work just seamlessly for us. But one thing I want to mention is that while you showed us all these great things that we can do to make our pages look great. Our templates are already packaged to coordinate and flow, correct? Yeah, in which case you only need a little bit of the advice I just gave you. <laughs> However, you could take what's in the package, which I already all coordinate together and slip another one in there. And now you know how to make that go with the package. Right, right. So if you've if you've got if if you've bought a set that coordinates, then you're good to go. You're really going to need very little Absolutely. adjustment. Everything but you if need you to decide be you want to pull in a couple other pages from some of the other collections, then you can do that and you can coordinate them very simply using the tips that you've given in this video. Right. Right. Fantastic. Okay, great. Well, that's it for this week. If you've got any questions about what you watched today or any questions about heirloom or how to use Canva to build your family history book, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments below or email us directly. We're happy to answer all those questions. Absolutely. And subscribe so you'll know when our next video is. Absolutely. Give us some like, <laughs> give us some love. So that, <laughs> yeah. So we know that we're just not talking to ourselves, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk to you anytime, Lynn. <laughs> I know, but it would be nice if we had an audience out there. And <laughs> by now we do, but, um, but yeah, so we'll be back next week. And if I think I've got this right, we're going to talk about the timelines next week. And yep. I know you showed us a little bit of those timelines and in today's um, book and we touched on them a little bit, but we're just going to really focus in on those timelines in our next video. A little video. more in depth. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So we'll see you back here next week for another edition of Conversations and Questions with Lynn and Danette. Yeah. Have a good one. You too.